I hope it's not too late to do an April watch list wrap-up video. Um, I spent most of last weekend editing the heck out of that Scream video because I really wanted to get it up as soon as possible. And now we're a week into May, so it's like kind of an awkward time to do an April roundup. But honestly, I really didn't watch much this month and I kind of still want to do a wrap-up video just to keep it going. So if y'all are ready for everything I watched in April, Let's go. I started this month watching the Women at War limited series on Netflix. This followed four different women in a French town near the front line during World War I, all of whom have different skill sets, but they do what they can to take care of themselves and their loved ones as the war rages closer and closer to them. I will say this was definitely a bit of a soap opera at times, especially in regards to one character. I swear the things happening to her kept getting crazier and crazier to the point they were almost unbelievable, but I actually did enjoy this. I loved watching the four women take on the war on their own terms. The people who complain stories these days don't have enough stakes will absolutely love this because truly I never knew if a character would live or die. I could predict some of this, but most of it was very stressful and I definitely recommend it if you enjoy diving into women's roles during wartime. And then I rewatched Bros and had just about the same thoughts as when I watched it the first time. I will say I think I have begrudgingly added it to my list of comfort films now though. I say begrudgingly because Billy is one of the most frustrating protagonists a film has ever chosen to follow. And on top of that, nearly every other character in this would have been a more interesting perspective to follow. But I will say, at least the film knows that and does make a few jokes about him as the lead. And I really do love the comedy. So many of the jokes still land for me, even though I've obviously seen the film before. Also, the museum group is so dynamic and I wish we could get a film following them if they ever decide to create a sequel. As it is, it's an enjoyable and funny rom-com and it still makes me really happy when I watch it. Especially if you fast forward through some of Billy's rants. <laughs> I'm so sorry. His rants are so annoying. Edit it out. Kill your darling. Just a little bit. Anyways, then I watched Rent, the movie edition, which I did a commentary for, so I'm not going to spend too long on it here, but it's definitely a story I think I prefer to see as a musical live on stage rather than this, because something about this film didn't work that well for me. Not that it's bad. I still enjoyed it, but I think they go for as many musical numbers as possible, and it feels like it comes at expense of the plot sometimes. It just didn't feel like it was utilizing the movie format as well as it could but I still enjoyed it enough to look up more about the actual story and stage play, so I feel like it was definitely successful and good in that regard. Then I watched the entire first season of the anthology show Why Women Kill and loved it. It follows three different women during three different decades and explores different situations that could cause them to resort to murder. Y'all already know Simone and Carl were my favorite characters. I mean, they were camp incarnate and I love how they clearly had their differences, but they remained besties. They had such a strong bond regardless of the dynamics of their relationship. I honestly could not tell where the show was going for most of it especially during the modern time period, and I love how the season wrapped up. It was just an enjoyable watch, and I definitely recommend it if you like campy stories starring some wild characters just trying to deal with life and the trauma that comes with it. And then I rewatched The Deep Blue Sea while I was with Jenna, which is a post-World War II love story, except I still maintain that this is not a love story at all, but rather a metaphor for post-war Britain coming to terms with the end of the war and trying to figure out how they want to move forward. I have to keep repeating that to myself so I don't get too frustrated with the characters and their actions, but I still think this is a good watch if you enjoy quiet, slow, introspective films exploring trauma from the war with some stellar acting from both leads. Not to then move on from Tom to Taylor, but then I went to see Taylor Swift's The Heiress Tour, which I don't know if that technically counts here, but I did see it so I'm counting it as something I watched. So if you don't want concert spoilers, just skip ahead a little bit. She started it with Lover. Which I feel like healed something in me I didn't know need to be healed. My brain was still in cancelled lover fest mode and it just hadn't moved on. Very right where you left me vibes. And Lover is my favorite album, so I was always like a little bit devastated that I never got to see her perform it live. So to have her start this tour off with it, she started with Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Print. That's my freaking favorite song. Well, one of my favorite songs, but she also gave so much love to Evermore and I just truly could not be happier. I never in a million years would have thought I'd actually get to hear Tis the Damn Season live because it's April in Florida. <laughs> Tis the 
second season is one of my favorite songs. Literally, she played so many of my favorite songs. I was shooketh, shooketh. We got to hear Marjorie, which I, I gotta be honest. I, I said I was not gonna be crying, but I cannot listen to Marjorie without tearing up a little bit. I, I can't, I can't. I, you I, you I love that song so much, but it's just, it's beautiful. It was beautiful. Her whole Evermore set, the amount of love given to Lover and also Evermore, I was over the moon. People gave me all these friendship bracelets. I was so happy. I was so happy. This says Eras Tour. This one was given to me by a girl. I swear to you, she was no more than 10 years old. This made my whole day. She came up to me and asked, do you want to trade bracelets? This one says Clean, another one of my favorite songs. I love this song so much. So the fact that like someone gave me a clean bracelet i was so excited this one whoever made this i just you'll probably never see this video but i need you to know you're a genius you're a creative absolute genius i cannot figure out how you engineered this bracelet um but you should be majoring in engineering uh it's like a double bracelet but in one and it says lavender haze i put it on backwards but it says lavender haze with the lavender beads i just when the person traded me this, <laughs> the people around me who I did not know, complete strangers, were like, oh my God, that's a beautiful bracelet. And I'm like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Whoever did this, y'all are skilled beyond belief. Then I got Karma is a cat. I was just so excited. Do y'all wanna see the other ones I was wearing? The ones that I made? Sorry, I did not mean to turn this into like a Taylor Swift friendship bracelet, show and tell. But the ones that I actually wore, I wore one that says drama queen, taking swings. Had one that said too busy dancing because new romantics is one of my favorite songs. Then I had, of course, having a marvelous time. Then I had an all pink one that says you need to calm down. To finish it off, I have lost in a film scene for Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince. It was just an incredibly exciting event. The energy was just unparalleled. Taylor Swift was amazing. The fact she just performed for three hours straight with practically no breaks, 44 plus songs, Hello, what? Our surprise songs were Mad Woman and Mean. <laughs> mean? Just like, ugh. Little me needed that. Why you gotta be so mean? I have blasted that song through some pretty hard moments in my life. It has gotten me through a few things. So the fact that like randomly that was the surprise song, ugh, it was so good. I am so grateful I was able to go. I cannot believe it. Anyways, I don't know if that even counts here, but now y'all got a little bit of a Taylor Swift fangirling in the middle of this. I'm so sorry. Anyways, back to the actual movies and shows. I then finally watched Our Flag Means Death, which I loved so much more than I thought I would. Found family stories are some of my absolute faves, and I loved the entire crew. I loved Steed's emphasis on effective communication and leading with his heart. I loved Ed's character growth and the way he slowly felt safe to be himself and accepted himself for who he is. Taika was bringing his A-game with some intense screen presence, and they both gave really heartfelt and emotional performances. It was just such an enjoyable watch, although I am not over the cliffhanger and I need season two ASAP. I did do a commentary for it, so I'm not gonna fangirl too much over it here um, because I did it quite a lot there. But if you love Found Family, Gay Pirates, and Taika Waititi, and haven't seen this yet, <laughs> I definitely recommend it. I know I'm like the last one to see it, but you know. If you haven't seen it yet, you should. I enjoyed it so much that I immediately had to watch another one of Taika's projects, the What We Do in the Shadows movie, which I also did a commentary for, so I'm not gonna dive too much into it here, but I really enjoyed it. I love dark comedies, I love vampires. The idea to blend vampires with a documentary is just brilliant, and I had a lot of fun watching it. To answer the many comments in the movie commentary video, I will definitely at least react to the first season, and then if I love the first season, I will probably react to the rest. But it will probably be a little bit closer to fall just because I have a few other things in the lineup 
and shows always take me a lot longer to edit than just a standalone film. I promise I'm gonna give at least the first season a chance on the channel and a video will be coming soon. Anyways, then I watched A League of Their Own for the first time and enjoyed it a lot. I am very much so not a sports person, so I wasn't expecting to love this as much as I did, but it was such a good portrayal of a very specific and very, very relatable sister dynamic that I couldn't help but love it. I love Dottie's character. I felt like I could really feel for Kit. Honestly, I was sobbing by the end. The only part I found kind of annoying was having to sit through all the sexism, but obviously that's of the time. And it wasn't enough to derail me from putting this on my list of favorite World War II homefront films, which is maybe a list I should not have but I do. <laughs> but you know, if anyone needs home front wrecks, I got you, I got you. <laughs> so on to Disobedience, which I watched because the poster caught my eye on Netflix. And let me just say, I did enjoy some elements of it. Like I think the character study of these friends in a tight knit Jewish community is done really well. And I loved the examination of how the three of them experience their religion individually and collectively. But this is a really slow movie. And I say that as someone who usually really enjoys slow burns stories, I would maybe say this was a little too slow for my tastes. As it is, I still would recommend this film to anyone who's interested in a study of a queer Jewish woman coming back to a community she left in her youth, coming to terms with grief over a deceased family member, and reconnecting with a past love. That part is solid. <laughs> Just be forewarned that it is a slow moving film most of the time, and also kind of sad. And then I watched Scream 6, which I also did a commentary for, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it here because I feel like you can experience the entire film with me, but I really, really loved it. I love the core four to absolute bits. I feel like there were some really creative decisions taken in this film, especially with the opening. That was so exciting. I personally really loved Scream 2, so I loved all of the callbacks and the references to Scream 2. And I also feel like it was pulling out some of the campier elements that we haven't really seen since Scream 3. And I just, you know what? I am so here for just a campy, fun slasher that also explores trauma. I just really enjoyed that film. And then I finished up the month watching a separate piece, which is an adaptation based on a book I haven't read, but my sister was trying to figure out if she wanted to show the film to her class because they all read the book. And obviously I'm never gonna say no to watching a film. So I watched this with her and um, it wasn't my favorite. <laughs> It's boarding school hijinks as a group of boys prepares to come of age and go off to a war none of them fully understand or are prepared for, but the main story follows these two roommates who absolutely have feelings for each other. But what happens happens to a character that the film previously establishes as that annoying kid who peer pressures the rest of the group into trying to do some dangerous things. So the entire time, part of my brain was just like, don't peer pressure people, and you might not be facing the consequences of your actions, which is not the point of the movie. I feel like a lot of the story is supposed to be like examining the feelings of desire in terms of like desire for a person, desire for doing certain actions that happen. I'm trying not to spoil this. This movie came out in the seventies, but I'm trying not to spoil it. But the annoyingness of the plot just kept me from really getting into this film as much as I would have liked. And like, again, I haven't read the book, so obviously take my opinion with a grain of salt. We'll always take my opinion with a grain of salt, but you know what I mean. But just personally, I can only take so much of the constant peer pressuring that's present in this story before I'm just like, I, I don't care. There are consequences for your actions. Also, my favorite character in this got no closure for his storyline, so that did not help my opinion of this film. I'm not gonna spoil it, but he makes some choices that would definitely have a lot of consequences, and those I wanna see. I wanna know what happens to him. I guess I'm gonna have to read the book. You might like it though if you've read the book, but if you've read the book, you've probably already seen this, so I mean, honestly, Again, my opinions do not matter. Anyways, that is everything I watched this month. I hope you guys had a great month. I hope you watched some amazing things and I hope you all have an amazing May coming up, even though we're technically a week into May, but y'all know what I mean. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I will see you for the next one. And yeah, see ya.